I was assigned to General Bradley's 12th Army Group. Right. And he had the 1st, 3rd, and the 9th Army. They'd create uh, just temporary headquarters or still pitch a tent for them to hold their meeting. So we'd fly them into that area and then fly them right back out when the meeting was over. I flew Bradley and I flew Patton, who was the 3rd Army. That was one of Bradley's armies. Wow. And, and then I flew Eisenhower a couple of times. What did these guys say to you? Eisenhower called me son, <laughs> and he was just like a father to me. He was he was a wonderful man. I, I really admired him. And uh, so how did how did you feel when he became president of the United States? Very very good. It must have been amazing that you knew him personally. Well, yeah, but he knew a lot of people personally. I was just one of the group, you know. What, were, what was Patton like? I had to shake a head every time he talked about Patton, because he was a darn good officer, but he he broke more rules than you could shake a stick at. But every time he did, he, he'd come out on top. I could tell you Patton stories half the afternoon. Well, tell me one. In France, uh, he came over shortly after D-Day. And um, all of a sudden, Patton's, they can't find him. So we started flying ever-increasing half circles. And we finally found him with his tanks running dry, 68 miles from home base. <laughs> he captured all that, or ran through that area, and he, he, he'd stabilized it. So uh, the, the Allies had it. The Germans didn't know it at this time, it, but uh, the Allies had it. So when they found out it, it, where he was, they got the gasoline trucks on the way real fast and got him out there. But. Of course, he got in trouble doing that. He, he had no no orders or anything to do it. So when he did it about Eisenhower, and they got pretty upset with that. <laughs> he was out there with nobody's nobody's knowledge. <laughs> and and uh, uh, another time, uh, we're flying up on the autobahn, and uh, I had Eisenhower with me, and uh, there's a guy standing at a jeep in the middle of this intersection on the autobahn, directing traffic. And uh, Eisenhower looked at is that Patton down there? I didn't know it from, from that distance. I said, we'll go down and take a look. So we swooped a little bit low, came back by him. As sure as heck was him with the pistols and everything, he's directing this traffic. So he was going to the same meeting Eisenhower was going to on that, a little further along on the Autobahn. We pitched tents under some trees so these guys could have their meetings. And Patton got into all kinds of trouble because <laughs> General... Uh, Hodges and General Simpson were at that meeting. That was the uh, first and the ninth armies. Pat was the third. These are all under Bradley. He was there. And uh, what, what, what happened was Patley was checking the, the supplies that these trucks were bringing. And those were the gas he was sending toward his tanks and then letting the other stuff go through with the other armies. But they weren't getting any gas to speak of. So. <laughs> <laughs> when when these guys got to that meeting and found out what he'd been doing, he patented it too well. <laughs> yeah. Well, can you tell me about Eisenhower? Oh, just a wonderful man. You looked at him as a father figure. At least I did. I call me son. Compare the three of them, Bradley, Patton, and Eisenhower. <laughs> well, none of them were the same. But uh, Bradley was a good, darn good officer. He was a very good officer. He's quiet. He, he got his work done, and he was a good administrator. And he had a nice personality. Patton was a rough guy. He he he, he came at you right, right on, you know. But Eisenhower and Bradley were very much alike. Now, it, when the war ended, did you ever have contact with these guys again? No, no, not after the war, no.